Welcome viewers to another very special episode of Your Britain, Yes Your Britain every Monday 5pm UK time broadcasting to you on channel Sky 772 reaching out to over 180 countries around the globe, yes 180 countries which are watching us live at this particular moment. Your Britain every Monday, not to, for, not to forget the repeat is every Friday 2pm UK time, yes that's every Friday 2pm UK time and other than that you can watch the program on social uh, websites, Facebook, also the uh, uh, country TV website so there is no reason uh, not to, uh, to miss this program particularly on YouTube if you go on to country TV.com uh, all the details are on the website and so on today we'll be talking about a legend who we have lost uh, a couple of months back in 2020 due to COVID-19 but let me remind everybody for those particular people because every week I mention this that we are losing legends in our community right across the board from all communities from all cultures from all societies we are losing uh, you know people who have committed all their lives when it comes to social welfare community issues charitable issues they have dedicated all their lives and for that reason we We'll be talking to someone very special, uh, a legacy of this particular individual, uh, his son, who I'm really privileged and great to have him in the studio here, but I'm going to introduce you. Uh, very briefly, let me also remind you, COVID-19, every week I mention this, the stats and the figures, more and more people are dying on a daily basis. I think uh, approximately between six, seven, eight hundred people on a daily basis are dying now. Um, I have been saying this on all my shows, even today, please protect yourself, protect your loved ones and please don't ignore the government guidelines. In our Asian communities, I'm sorry to state this, but this is the fact, our Asian community is still not taking this seriously. So, in this case, I will be sure you because my program is English. So, I will try to say that what I will say to my friends, my friends, who are in the studio, I will try to say that we will talk about it in our own Urdu. Because I know that our viewers are also the same, but our middle age viewers are more than the middle age viewers. They are more than the middle age viewers. دو زبان یا پنجابی زبان میں بات کرے اور میں فخر کے ساتھ کہہ سکتا ہوں کہ جو ساتھی میرے ساتھ آج بیٹھے ہوئے وہ اردو بھی بول سکتے ہیں اور پنجابی بھی بول سکتے ہیں تو اس لیے آج ہم یہ کوشش کریں گے کہ پروگرام کو اپنی اردو زبان میں پیش کریں لیکن اس سے پہلے بار بار میں آپ لوگوں کو یہ بتاتا ہوں ایوری ویک بلکہ یہ آپ کو بتاتا ہوں کہ خدا را آپ اپنا اپنی فیملیز کا خیال رکھیں یہ جو کووڈ نائنٹین یہ جو ڈیزیز ہے کہ پوری دنیا میں بلکہ یو کے کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں پوری دنیا میں آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ کیا حالت ہو رہی ہے ہمارے افسوس کے ساتھ مجھے یہ کہنا پڑتا ہے کہ ہماری مائیں بہنیں بہن بھائی بچے اب تک اس چیز کو وہ اگنور کر رہے ہیں آپ سب وہ سمجھ رہے ہیں کہ بھائی یہ کچھ نہیں ہے تو ہم آپ کو بتا رہے ہیں اگر کچھ نہیں ہے تو سات آٹھ سو نو سو آدمی ان ڈیلی بیسیز کیونکہ پچھلے دنوں فگرز یہ دس پندرہ آدمی ڈیتھ ہو رہی تھی لیکن پچھلے مہینے میں آپ نے دیکھا لاک ڈاؤن سے پہلے بھی دیکھ رہے تھے اب تو لاک ڈاؤن ہے یوکے کے اندر آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ کم سو کم چھے سو سات سو آٹھ سو تک آدمی جو ہیں مرد اور بچے وہ اب اپنی زندگی کھو بیٹھتے ہیں اس وجہ سے کیونکہ ایک تو چلو ہم یہ بھی مانتے ہیں ہمارا ایمان بھی ہے کہ جو زندگی موت ہے خدا کے ہاتھ میں لیکن کم سو کم خدا نے ہمیں یہ بھی بتایا ہے یا جس ریلیجن کو آپ مانتے ہیں کہ کم سو کم آپ کو اپنی سیفٹی تو آپ اپنی سیفٹی تو کریں نا چلو اگر دوسروں کی کریں نہ کریں کم سو کم اپنی کریں جب آپ اپنی سیفٹی کریں گے تو دوسروں کی آٹومیٹکلی سیفٹی ہو جائے گی تو اس کے حوالے سے میں یہ بھی بات کروں گا اپنے گیسٹ کے ساتھ لیکن میسج آپ کو ہم بار بار اس پلیٹ فارم سے یہ میسیج پچھا رہے ہیں کہ پلیز پروٹیکٹ اس آر واش یو ہینڈ ایلیسٹ کیپ امیٹر ڈیسٹنس اور یو نو کیپ ویرنگ یو ماسٹ ایف یو گو ایڈ اور واقعی اگر آپ نے باہر جانا ہے اگر بہت ضروری ہے تو آپ باہر جائیں ورنہ گھر میں اگر آپ آن لائن کھانا پینا سب کچھ آج کل ٹیکنالوجی کا دور ہے یو کن گیٹ ایوری تھنگ پلیس آن یو ٹیبلز ان یو ہوم یو ڈونٹ نیڈ ٹو گو ایٹ اینی وے لیکن اگر آپ کام کی مجبوری ہے یا مجبور ہے آپ کو جانا پڑتا ہے پوائنٹس وائنٹس وغیرہ وغیرہ وہاں پہ میک شور دیٹ یو آر فلی پروٹیکٹیڈ پروٹیکٹ اس آف اینڈ پروٹیکٹ اردرز تو اس کے حوالے سے یہ چھوٹا سا میرا میسیج تھا اور اس کے حوالے سے میں یہ بھی آپ کو بتانا چاہتا ہوں یو بریٹن کیسا پروگرام ہے پچھلی بھی آپ نے سنا تھا کہ میں نے پروگرام جو کیا تھا بہت ہی ایک خوبصورت پروگرام تھا ان اس کی فیڈ بیک ہمیں ہزاروں لوگوں نے رائٹ اکراس بلکہ یو کے کے اندر سے بھی اور دنیا کے ہر کونے سے ہمیں فیڈ بیک آئی تھی کہ جو پروگرام ہم نے کیا تھا بوچز آور چارجنگ ان کووڈ نائنٹین وہ ہم نے پارٹ ون کیا تھا اب ہم پارٹ ٹو اس کا بھی کریں گے لیکن میں آپ کو مزید انفارمیشن دوں گا کہ ہم پارٹ ٹو کب کریں گے 
اس ٹاپک کے حوالے سے لیکن آج جو پروگرام ہے یہ تو ڈیو پروگرام تھا یقین کریں میرا دل کرتا تھا کہ میں دو تین مہینے پہلے کروں لیکن حالات ایسے تھے کووڈ کی وجہ سے اور جس شخصیت کو میں نے آج اسٹوڈیو میں بلایا وہ بھی کیونکہ ظاہر ہے کہ آپ اپنی فیملی کے اندر ایک منٹ آپ سوچیں کہ جس آدمی سے چاہے وہ ماں ہے باپ ہے بہن ہے بھائی ہے جس سے آپ اتنا پیار کریں اور دن رات صبح شام آپ ان کے ساتھ گزاریں اور اچانک چند گھنٹے کے مولت میں وہ آپ سے جدا ہو جائے تو پھر اس گھر کے حالات تو آپ سمجھ سکتے ہیں نا اس فیملی کے حالات آپ سے بہتر پھر کوئی نہیں سمجھ سکتا ہے تو اس کے حوالے سے پروگرام ڈیو تھا لیکن ہم نے خود اس کو تھوڑا سا ٹائم دیا کہ جو ان کے سب زیادہ میرے سامنے جو ابھی بیٹھے ہوئے میں ان کی انٹروڈکشن کروں گا اس کے حوالے سے ہم نے سوچا کہ آج ہم یہ پروگرام کریں گے اور یہ اسپیشل ٹریبیوٹ جو ہے صرف ایک شخصیت جن کو دنیا جانتی تھی دنیا کا ہر کونا دنیا کا بچہ بچہ ان کے نام سے آگاہ تھا اور جب یہاں اس ملک میں آئے تھے وہ نائنٹین سکسٹی فور میں ان کی عمر صرف گیارہ سال تھی صرف گیارہ سال ان کی عمر تھی اور یہاں آ کر انہوں نے اپنی زندگی سب سے پہلے کاروبار میں انہوں نے اپنا ٹائم جو ڈیڈیکیٹ کیا اور کاروبار کے بعد انہوں نے پھر اپنی کمیونٹی کے حوالے سے جو کام کیے ہیں جو سوشل ویلفیئر پولیٹیکل اس کے علاوہ چیریٹیبل ورک جو انہوں نے کام کیے آج تک میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ ایسا کام نہ کسی نے کیا شاید آندائی کو کرے لیکن آج تک ان کا ایک ریکارڈ ہے کہ بچہ بچہ جب بھی کو غریب گیا امیر گیا کوئی گیا کسی قوم کے ساتھ اس کا تعلق ہوا کسی مذہب کے ساتھ اس کا تعلق ہوا تو ان اس کی زبان پر اس آدمی کی زبان پر ایک ہی نام تھا وہ نظیر آوان تھا جی ہاں آج ایک سیرت کے بارے میں جو بات کر رہا ہوں ان کا نام دا لیجنڈ کیونکہ ہمارا کہتے ہیں نا لیجنڈس نے بٹائی فار اس ہی اسٹل دے فار یو ہی اسٹل دے فار دا ورلڈ ہی اسٹل دے یس آف کورس از نائن فرنٹ آف اس بٹ اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب دعا کرتے ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ جنت میں ان کو اعلیٰ مقام دے ان کے بیٹے میرے دوست بلکہ میرے بھائی آسنی کاربن تیس چالیس سال سے ہمارا ایک فیملی ریلیشن شپ ہے مجھے اور کانچی ٹی وی کو یہ بہت بڑی ایک سعادت نصیب ہوئی ہے کہ میرے سامنے آج وہ بیٹھے ہوئے دا ون اینڈ اونلی امر اوان صاحب ویلکم ٹو کانچی ٹی وی تھینک یو شہزاد اینڈ تھینک یو کانچی ٹی وی اینڈ ویلکم ٹو یور پرٹرن تھینک یو سر باتیں تو بہت کرنی ہیں ہم نے ٹائم بھی ہمارے پاس مناسب ہے لیکن اگر میں دن رات یہاں بیٹھ کر نظیر آوان صاحب کے بارے میں بات کروں تو پھر بھی ہم وہ بات نہیں کر سکتے نہیں آپ کے پاس ٹائم نہیں ہوگا ٹائم ہی نہیں ہوگا اور ان کے بارے میں جتنی بھی باتیں کریں تو پھر بھی کوئی نہ کوئی ایسی بات ہوگی جو پھر بھی ادھوری رہ جائے گی کیوں کہ ایک ایسا شخص جنہوں نے جنم نائنٹین ففٹی تھری میں وہ پیدا ہوئے تھے اور اللہ کو وہ پیارے ہوئے تھے ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی میں ابھی اسی سال میں اور اپنی زندگی میں جب 1979 میں انہوں نے عوان جو فاؤنڈر تھے عوان انٹرنیشنل گروپ کے اس وقت آپ کو پتا ہے کہ لوگ جب یہاں میں امیگرنٹ آئے تھے ہمارے فیملیز کے پاکستان سے انڈیا سے بنگلہ دیش سے تو وہ ایک ہی مقصد کے لیے یہاں تھے کہ ہم نے روزی کمانی ہے اور روزی کمانے کا ان کا یہ سمپل طریقہ تھا کہ چلو بھائی ہم فیکٹری میں کام کریں گے یا چھوٹا موٹا کو کام کریں گے لیکن ان کی یہ سوچ کبھی بھی نہیں تھی کہ اتنے بڑے مقام پر ہم کام کریں گے لیکن نظیر آواز صاحب کی یہ سوچ تھی کہ اگر میں نے کچھ کرنا ہے تو میں نے ایک بہت بڑے پیمانے میں کام کرنا ہے اور آج یہ سوچ الحمد تو ہر گھر میں ہے ہر بچے میں ہے اگر آٹھ سال کا بچہ تو وہ بھی ان کے مائنڈ اس کے مائنڈ میں یہ ہوگا آ ون ابھی سم تھنگ بگ لیکن ایو یو گو بیک ان نائنٹین سیونٹی نائن اس وقت تو ایسی سوچ ہی نہیں تھی اس وقت تو یہ تھا کہ ٹھیک ہے جی ہم آئیں ادھر روزی کمائیں گے انڈیا پاکستان سے واپس چلے جائیں گے جب وہ آئے تھے اینڈ آئی تھنک آل ٹچ ان انگلش بیکاز آئی تھنک دا ویوز اینڈ دا یگسٹر ویوز اسپیشلی شو نیڈ ٹو نو اباؤٹ دس از ویری جی کہ دوز دوز ٹائمز آر ویری ڈفیکلٹ وین دے کیم اوور دی ایج آف 11 And, you know, it was very tough times for uh, the first generation who came over. Like my grandfather came in 62. Gigi. And he was uh, an Air Force man, you know. Gigi. So when he came here, he used to work in a factory as a, a skilled man. And then my father came at the age of 11, schooled here, um, wanted to further his studies, wanted to become a doctor, in fact. But he was also in Pakistan, so he also came here. So then my grandfather said, look, uh, you need to start working. So he ended up doing mechanical engineering from the Achha. School of London City and Girls. So he mechanical engineer. So he a So my grandfather was also a businessman. So he a lot of business in uh, Northern Ireland, cafeterias, army cafeterias. So then he started electronics. 
सो दिस इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स बिजनेस स्टार्टेड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी नाइन ठीक है तो मतलब काफ़ी मेहनत की उन्होंने यू नो इट वॉज अ टफ टाइम फॉर दैम लेकिन उन्होंने काम बहुत किया वर्क वेरी हार्ड यू नो दस वन वी व किड्स वी हार्डली स्टोर आफ आदर बिकॉज ही वॉज ऑल्सो वर्किंग नया नया काम शुरू किया था उन्होंने सो इट वॉज वेरी टफ फॉर एस लेकिन मेहनत बहुत की उन्होंने तो पीछे फैमिली की रुकावट की पाकिस्तान में भी की इधर कम्यूनिटी का काम भी काफ़ी की उन्होंने तो बिजनेस तो है माशाल्लाह फिर जारी हो गया दे डिड वेरी वेल माशाल्लाह वेरी सक्सेसफुल व्हाट दे डन बट दे नेवर फॉरगॉट द रूट्स ऑफ वेयर दे केम फ्रॉम एंड ही पुट अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क इन टू द कम्युनिटी व्हिच माय ग्रैंड फादर आल्सो डन सो वी कम फ्रॉम अ फैमिली ऑफ कम्युनिटी वर्कर्स आई थिंक दैट वाज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट असल में ये आपसे बात उस मौजूद में तो मैं आऊंगा लेकिन मैं आपसे ये पूछना चाहता हूं कि आपकी एक बहन भी है जी जी और आप एक भाई हैं जी जी और सबसे बड़ी उनकी अब 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 जो काम उन्होंने किया अलहमदिल्ला वो एक से बढ़कर एक काम था लेकिन सबसे बड़ा काम जो उन्होंने किया था कि अपने बेटे को भी और अपनी बेटी को भी जो एजुकेशन फील्ड के अंदर उन्होंने तालीम दिलाई थी उनको दोनों बहन भाई मुझे पता आपसे भी मेरे बड़े पुराने तलकात हैं आपकी बहन से भी बहुत पुराने के वो भी एक फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री के साथ उनका तल्लक है आप भी एक ग्रेजुएट हैं लेकिन जो मेहनत उन्होंने अपनी औलाद पर की है उस वक्त जिस तरह मैं मैंने पहले अर्ज़ की है कि उस वक्त का एक ही माइंड था हमारे लोगों में माइंड सेट था कि भाई इंग्लैंड जाएंगे या दुनिया के किसी मुल्क में जाएंगे पैसा कमाएंगे फिर वापस पाकिस्तान आएंगे उस वक्त तो औलाद को एजुकेशन देना तो दूर की बात है ना सिर्फ उस वक्त ये था कि चलो रात का खाना हमें मिल जाएगा और हमें भी यहाँ मिल जाएगा और पाकिस्तान में या इंडिया में या बांग्लादेश में जो हमारे बहन भाई हैं उनको रात का खाना पहुँचा दें अली उन्होंने कहा कहा था बिकॉज दे वर्क वेरी हार्ड जी जी तो फिर ये सोचते कहते लोग वी आर वर्किंग सो हार्ड जी जी the most we can do our we want our children is to be जी. educated acha and he was a advocate for education wo khud bhi bahut dilchaspte in education theek hai to kehte look the only thing i want from my children is to be educated जी, जी. not just my children he would talk to all the children that you must educate yourself because this is something that nobody can take away from you get that everybody wants to do business theek hai business will open up but tomorrow you got to stand on your own two feet beshak so education is the key and he was not afraid of that he always liked people who went towards education and he pushed people to go to education abhi education ki baat karu main mujhe khud samajh nahi aa rahi ki main kis kis cheez ki baat karu agar social welfare ki baat karu to unka naam sabse aage tha agar hum charitable ki baat kare to aaj tak ye main 100% परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस के साथ कह सकता हूँ व्यूवर्स कि जो आदमी उनके दरवाजे पर आया जो आदमी उनके दरवाजे पर आया वो खाली नहीं गया ठीक है उसके अलावा जो उनका एक मतलब कम्यूनिटी के हवाले से अब मैं बात करूँ तो एक एक मौजू ऐसा है कि मैं दिन रात बात कर सकता हूँ उसमें लेकिन अगर कम्यूनिटी में मैं बात करूँ तो जहाँ कम्यूनिटी की जरूरत पड़ी है सबसे पहला जो नाम था वो नज़ीर आवान साहब का आता था अगर किसी के घर के अंदर को प्रॉब्लम थी यह भी मैं लोगों को बताना चाहता हूं क्योंकि बर्मी गांव की ये ऐसी शख्सियत थी यूके के अंदर कि अगर आपके घर में छोटा मोटा मसला तो हर घर में होता है मियाँ बीवी का होता है बहन भाई का होता है दोस्त दोस्त का होता है लेकिन अगर वो मसला हल करने के लिए सिर्फ एक ही नाम था नजीर अवान चलो जी नजीर अवान साहब के पास चलते हैं उनको बताते हैं यार ये प्रॉब्लम होगी है वो ही सोट आउट करेंगे वो काफ़ी एक्सपीरियंस भी था उनके पास आई मीन ही वॉज हेयर फ्रॉम एज ऑफ इलेवन जी जी डाइड एज सिक्सटी सेवन सो ही हैड अ लॉट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस ग्रोइंग अप इन दिस कंट्री नाल ही ऑल्सो हैड अ लॉट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस विद यू नो ही लव द पाकिस्तानी कल्चर ही लव दिन कल्चर कल्चर में ही वॉज वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉग विद दैट जी जी तो ही अंडरस्टूड पीपल एंड ही अंडरस्टूड पीपल हैड प्रॉब्लम्स बट ही रियली लुकड आफ्ट द कम्यूनिटी कहता है दिस कम्यूनिटी हैज़ गिवन मी सो मच जी जी कहता है ठीक है हमने नाम भी हमारे पास है काम ने हमने अच्छा किया बिजनेस भी ठीक है कम्यूनिटी वर्क में काफ़ी किया लेकिन इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू गिव बैक टू द कम्यूनिटी दैज गिवन यू सो मच एंड द कम्यूनिटी हैज़ गिवन अस लॉ दिस कंट्री हैज़ गिवन अस सो मच बिकॉज यू मस्ट लुक आफ्टर द योर ओन पीपल मीनिंग द पीपल ऑफ ब्रिटेन ही लव दिस कंट्री ही लव लुक इन आफ्टर यू नो दीज ओन कम्यूनिटी ही डिड लॉट ऑफ कम्यूनिटी वर्क विद वेदर इन मॉस्क वेदर इज इन बिजनेस वेदर इज चैरिटी ही ओवर स्टूड द फोर फ्रंट एंड यू मस्ट ओवर हेल्प दीज पीपल एंड ही ओवर डन दैट वेरी वेरी वेल एंड यू मस्ट अग्री विद मी एंड मिलियंस वुड हैव दर यू He had no fear in his heart. Absolutely nothing. He did, wasn't scared of anybody. If something was wrong, he would stand up. Whether there was 500 people there and say, "No, this is completely wrong." He stood up for us, for the whole community. Because naturally, some people are very shy to stand up and talk yeah, about yeah. certain issues or problems. He was never afraid. He said, "What? What? Who, why should I be scared? I'm only scared of one one person. That's yeah. my God." 
बिल्कुल आई एम नॉट अफ्रेड ऑफ एनीथिंग एल्स एंड आई वो स्टैंड ऑफ माई कम्यूनिटी एंड आई वो स्टैंड ऑफ माई पीपल एंड ही रियली डिड दैट अलॉट अभी क्योंकि मैं चंद मिसालें लेना चाहता हूँ और मैंने कहा ना हज़ारों मिसालें लेकिन वेरी ब्रीफली कम्यूनिटी के हवाले से जो उन्होंने काम किए हैं मैं चाहता हूँ कि हमारे लाखों हज़ारों व्यूज देख रहे और वो हंड्रेड एटी कंट्रीज कोई ऐसी मिसाल और मुझे पता है पर्सनली तो मैं उनको वी वर रेज बाई यू नो चालीस पचास साल से हमारे फैमिली टाइज थे लेकिन मैं आपकी जुबानी आज सुनना चाहता हूँ मुझे एक एक एग्जाम्पल दे दें एक चैरिटी का दे दें एक कोई कम्यूनिटी का दे दें कि लोगों को पता चले हाँ ठीक है मैं आपको दे दूँ उनकी कैरेक्टर तो आपको पता है हीज सर्कल वॉज द बिजनेस कम्युनिटी बिकॉज ही डिड बिजनेस एंड ही एक्सेल्ड इन इट वेरी वेरी वेल जी जी ही वॉज अ वेरी वेरी गुड बिजनेस मैन वेरी गुड ऑन्टरप्रनर जी जी तो यू सी द स्टार्ट देर वॉज अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम फॉर एजेंस कमिंग इन टू बिजनेस बेशक सो ही स्टार्टेड द इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एशियन बिजनेस विच टूडे इज नोन एज द एशियन बिजनेस चेंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स ठीक है तो हेम एंड एक्सम्पल फ्रेंड स्टार्ट दर ऑर्गनाइजेशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ द चेंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स बिकॉज अ लॉट ऑफ द एशियन पीपल स्टार्टिंग बिजनेस दे डिट नो मच अबाउट अकाउंट्स फाइनेंस यू नो एच एम आर सी ऑल द लीगल इशूज सो दे स्टार्टड द इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एशियन बिजनेस एट द टाइम सो विद दैट दे यूज टू होल्ड रेगुलर सेमिनार्स टू हेल्प द बिजनेस अंडरस्टैंड ऑफ टैक्सेशन साइड ऑफ थिंग्स हाउ टू अप्रोच सप्लायर्स बायर्स ऑल दिस कांड थिंग्स सो ही रीडी बिकेम द बैक बोन ऑफ द एशियन कम्युनिटी एंड रीडी सपोर्ट दम वेरी वेरी वेल यू नो इवन ड्यूरिंग द क्राइसिस ऑफ वन द बैंक क्रैशिंग एंड ही इवन एट अ मीटिंग विद द बैंक ऑफ इंग्लैंड manager with him to okay. sort out this issue so you know he was an advocate for that and he always supported and he was a, a supporter of young people coming into business you know there's many a time i would sit in the office and these youngsters would come mm-hmm. and say uncle we want to start a business can you please help us and he would sit and he would un- make them understand this is how you should do it this is mm-hmm. how you must approach it ji ji and always guide them he never turned anybody away if somebody wanted help he was there for them we even with charity he he supported so many charities you know not just here but abroad also but here abar bhai hamare sath ek live call hai agar aap ijazat de do hello kanji tv hello hello ji 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 bhai jana aapka kya naam hai kahan se bol rahe hain aap hello main mera naam hai mohammad jaafar hai i am locally based in birmingham ji ji I'm very pleased that you are paying tribute to uh, Zeer Awang Saab, uh, who was a very popular figure in uh, here in Midlands, and uh, he did uh, was very helpful to anybody who went to up to him. Ji ji. And uh, your yes, son is uh, your call to the studio, but uh, unfortunately died of a corona virus. And uh, another personality whom I remember is Asram Basan, but uh, of course. both of them were very popular and very uh, mm-hmm. uh, likable people for person ji 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 so uh, th- thank you very much that you are paying tribute to uh, such a famous person thank you sir and uh, he really helped everybody that went up to him and uh, i remember his shop opposite the old pakistan embassy and i often used to meet him ji ji he was very always very kind to me and to everybody else Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ajaz Bhai. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching uh, Kanji TV and your Britain. And, and and this is the beauty that oh. even now I get people ringing me every single day, telling me what a wonderful personality he was, and that's a true legacy that he left. So anyway, we're talking about charity work. Did so you? he did a lot of charity work. He sat on the board with Princess Anne, Save did the you? Children. He did a lot of work for them. He was also sat, you know, on the regeneration uh, of Birmingham. You Take know, care. you see all the regeneration now with the Royal Mail offices. You know, he have he sat on the, on the, on those boards and many other boards, Take whether care. political boards or charity boards. Of course. But the thing was, he did it for the right reason, to actually support them in the right way. He didn't do it for the public profile. Welcome. He didn't do, he didn't need to do that because of the kind of personality that he was. Welcome. He did it genuinely from the heart for the community, and that's something that we are very very proud of. He. He was a shining star Absolutely. in our community. But in this case, along with all the things you have mentioned, I mean, as I said, if we start giving example on yeah. every one uh, 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 issue, we'll be here day and night. But in life, we are told that our people are very unfair, and sometimes they don't even pay attention to human beings. Absolutely. And I have to say with pride that we are all one. कि पर्टिकुलर हमारी कम्युनिटीज़ में जो हमारी एशियन कम्युनिटी जिसमें आप मैं भी हूँ और आप भी हैं कि हम यही कोशिश करते हैं जो नहीं करनी चाहिए 
कि अगर कोई इंसान अच्छा काम कर रहा है तो उसके साथ हम चलें उसको हम प्रमोट करें उसको हम वो इज़्ज़त दें मकाम दें अनफॉर्चुनेटली और सैडली हम ये करते हैं कि उसकी टांग कैसे हम ये हमारी एक फितर बनी हुई जो मुझे सख्त अफसोस के साथ कहना पड़ता है लेकिन ज़िंदगी में नज़ीर अवान साहब के भी चाहने वाले तो करोड़ों और लाखों थे लेकिन कोई ऐसे भी थे जो चाहते थे उसके हवाले से मैं चाहता हूँ कि आप थोड़ा सा वो लोग आपको हर जगह मिलेंगे लेकिन ही डन बहुत रुपादर कहता है If you doing something properly from your heart with good mm-hmm. intention, doesn't matter about anybody else. You should think about the people who are thinking positive about you. He said, if you do something positive, forget about the negative. He was never he he never thought negative. His Achha. motto was think positive. Achha. Whether people spoke, he didn't care, because he knew that he was doing something right from Achha. the heart. So he didn't bother him, and he always always said the same thing to me. He said, forget about what people speak about. He said, the people. Who want to see you fail? Don't worry about them. Acha. You just keep doing the right thing, and every, the results of your actions will follow. If we move on <coughs> one step further, I know he was a very fit man, hmm. very fit man. We have seen on social media he was playing golf five days a week, enjoying life hmm. with his family, friends, going out, hmm. eating out. He loved eating out many times. You know, we've met up. He was a great individual and a very fit person. अब मैं आपसे ये पूछना चाहता हूँ कि जिस तरह पहले मैंने कहा है कि ज़िंदगी मौत और खुदा के हाथ में एक बहाना ही बनता है. अब मैं I know this is very difficult for you. I know this is very sensitive for you, and I know you greatly miss your father. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, right? No doubt about that. All. No doubt about that. अब मुझे थोड़ा सा उनका लाइफस्टाइल के बारे में बताएं तो फिर मैं वन मोर स्टेप फर्दर ऑन टू गो फ्रॉम देयर यू सी ही लव स्पोर्ट ही लव टू सोशलाइज दो शारों को पता है ही हैड सो मेनी फ्रेंड्स जी जी बट हिज पैशन वाज स्पोर्ट and keeping fit particular golf yeah he loved golf i mean golf we actually started together uh, i'm talking you know probably in, in 1995 we started playing golf acha and he had a passion for it of course so then he used to play very regularly sometimes three maybe four times a week especially in the summer he was out every day acha come winter sun rain shine whatever every morning he would be out on his bike cycling 7 miles guaranteed Achha. that's something that he always done he watched what he eats you know he diet was his main thing he didn't you know eat unhealthy food okay. and he was a camp- campaigner for that he used to tell people you must exercise you must sure. eat the right food um so it came to us as a shock when he actually eventually got covid okay. um you know the kind of lifestyle he lay, he'd lead and you know he made sure that my kids were always into sport and he he would, every time i had to leave the office to go to cricket he never said oh, don't go because oh. he was very into people uh, in, in uh, into fitness and health and like i said he would pe- educate people especially our older generation who had who you know who are about 50 but they look about 60 and you said what have you done to yourself you know look at yourself sort yourself out look sort you, your stomach is out there do some exercise because only this is what's going to help you ab me because you mentioned covid i was mm. going to come to that point but before i come to that point mm. i know he loved his grandchildren to bits yeah there was his there was his, uh, his there life was his life yeah absolutely for that way there yeah. was his life absolutely kyunki जब भी सोशल मीडिया पे हम देखते थे hmm. जो दुनिया देखती थी जो तो उनको जानते थे वो तो एक सेपरेट सब्जेक्ट है लेकिन जो दुनिया देखती थी कभी किसी बच्चे की बर्थडे है hmm. कभी किसी बच्ची की बर्थडे है जी जी. कभी किसी पोते की कभी किसी पोती की कभी किसी और की कभी किसी और की लेकिन फैमिली स्टाइल जो उनके थे ना hmm. वो वेरी वेरी क्लोज थे बिल्कुल तो मैं चाहता हूँ कि थोड़ा जा थोड़ा सा आप इस पर बात करें जी जी नो डैड वॉज a very very strong family man abhi ab dekhen when jab unke wali sahab hote hain he was only 30 years old ji ji to zahir unke teen bhai bhi the behne bhi thi ji ji pura khandan tha ji ji he had to look after them so he became the center of family my grandmother was alive obviously okay to he really stepped up you know as a son and and looked after the whole family not just here family in pakistan Jee-jee. also so naturally he instilled family values into all of us okay i mean aapne bhi bataya bhi birthdays yeah. weddings parties he was a center he would make sure that jo jo bhi family function hai acha ho theek ho logon ko bulana chahiye khana theek ho whatever 
तो फैमिली वॉज इज नंबर वन प्रायोरिटी अभी आप पता है काफ़ी लोग कहते हैं यू मस्ट लुक आफ्ट यू बिजनेस बिजनेस कम्स फर्स्ट एंड फैमिली माई डेड ओवर नो फैमिली इफ कम्स फर्स्ट फैमिली इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट दैन एनी थिंग सो ही रीडी केप द फैमिली टूगेदर वेरी स्ट्रॉगली एंड वी आर वट वी आर टूडे बिकॉज ऑफ हिम आर फैमिली टूगेदर बिकॉज ऑफ हिम टूडे अगर मैं इस मौजू पर बात करूँ अमर भाई तो फिर तो एक और दास्तान है और एक बहुत लंबी चौड़ी दास्तान है लेकिन मैं सिर्फ आपसे अब ये पूछना चाहता हूँ कि हमारे पास लिमिटेड टाइम भी होता है अब हमने बात कर ली है उनकी ज़िंदगी के बारे में उनके कारोबार के बारे में उनकी फैमिली टाइज के बारे में उनकी रिलेशनशिप जो फैमिली के साथ थी उसके बारे में हमने हाईलाइट किया पर्टिकुलर विद योर चिल्ड्रन मैंने कितनी बार देखा सोशल मीडिया पर कि ही वॉज वेरी वेरी क्लोज विद इन इज़ ओन फैमिली बल्कि दुनिया के साथ ही वो क्लोज थे जी जी लेकिन फैमिली का जो इनका एक रोल था रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ही हैज नेवर एवर शिफ्टेड अवे फ्राम दिन नंबर वन प्रायोरिटी कारोबार में भी उन्होंने अच्छा किया है चालीस पचास साल फ्राम नाइनटीन फिफ्टी ईयर्स ही फिफ्टी ईयर्स पचास साल का कारोबार है और उसके अलावा जो दुनिया के साथ जिस तरह अभी हमारे भाई ने फ़ोन किया कि भाई ये वो लोग हैं जो उनको जानते हैं उनका उन्होंने असलम वसन साहब का भी नाम लिया है तो मैं उनको ये भी बता दूं कि मैंने पिछले दो महीने असलम वसन साहब का ऑलरेडी कंट्रीब्यूट कांची टीवी पे हमने पेश कर दिया था उनके बेटे यहाँ पे आए थे तो इन ये प्लेटफॉर्म ऐसा है कि हम सबको देते हैं कि जो भी कम्यूनिटी के हवाले से जिसने जो कुछ भी करा है कम्यूनिटी के हवाले से यो ब्रिटेन इज़ योर प्लेटफॉर्म तो बात मैं कर रहा था कि जिस तरह उस बाई जान ने कहा कि he was a man for the community he was born for the community you see he didn't care whether you're rich you're poor educated not educated to him everybody was equal and that's why people loved him he could sit amongst any circle you know he would advise people people would listen to him because he had so much wisdom and he was genuine and i think that's the key thing that he was so genuine and pure from the heart the advice he gave the community how he led the community i think that's the thing he was a true community leader many what well, are still in meaning yes abhi wo to zinda nahi hai lekin aapke liye hamare liye to hamesha hamare saath hai bilkul lekin har dil mein ye khwahish thi ke hum bhi nazira wan bane hum bhi un jaisa kaam kare hum bhi un jaisa ek system hamara bhi ghar ka ek system aisa ho ye wo khwahish to mujh mein bhi abhi aap dekhein i've been working with dad for over 20 years bas ye sawal mein puchna chahta tha be over 20 years since i graduated I've been working alongside my father. Did you? Especially the last eight years, we've shared the same office together. We sit together. So her beti ki hote the I want to be like my father. Aaj jab main aapke office mein aaya, TV ke program live jaane se pehle, ye unki vaat ke baad main pehli baar office mein aaya. Na to main aata jaata rehta hoon. Bata lekin unke jaane ke baad aaj mujhe mauka mila. Lekin yakin kare, baat to main aapke saath kar raha tha. Main aapko sachi bata raha hoon. Aap mere samne the, lekin mera mind kahi aur tha. मैं आपको गाड़ जानी स्ट्रूट कि मेरा एक तो उनके बस वो एक जगह वो कुर्सी उनके थी। पास एक प्रेजेंस था ना द प्रेजेंस दैट ही हैड विच एवरीबॉडी लाइक सिमिलर विद मी तो आज हिम नॉट बीइंग हियर इट्स वेरी अपसेटिंग फॉर मी आई सिट इन आर ऑफिस हिज डेस्क इज स्टिल देयर मैं यही कहूंगा बट ही इज नॉट देयर ही इज नॉट देयर एंड पिक्चर्स आर देयर फ्रेम्स आर देयर एंड एंड इट्स नॉट इजी इट्स नॉट इजी बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू वर्क विद समवन सो लॉन्ग एंड ही हैज बीन द परफेक्ट रोल मॉडल नॉट जस्ट माय रोल मॉडल यार ही वाज He was my, he was my uh, everything. Achha. My uh, teacher, the sub, okay. whatever I am today is because of for him. For everyone, for everyone. And he taught me what I am. You know, mentor hota hai insan ka. He was my mentor, my guide, my confidant, everything. Achha. So that void that is not there now is very upsetting. मुझे ये बताएं कि जब अचानक वो बीमार हो गए, इससे पहले हमने बात की उनके फिटनेस के बारे में ही उसका हुआ लाना होती है। अचानक वो बीमार हो गए due to this COVID. तो जब आपको ये खबर मिली अमर हाउ डिड यू फील वेल एक्चुअली दिस विल टेक मी सम टाइम टू एक्सप्लेन टू यू ठीक है सो वी वर वर्किंग इन द ऑफिस काम कर रहे थे कटी एंड ही वाज अ फ्राइडे तो ही हैड अ माइल्ड कॉफ बट ही वाज अवेयर ऑफ कोविड ही वुड ऑलवेज कीप हिज हैंड सैनिटाइज अभी आप देखें आई स्टोक द सैनिटाइज ऑन हिज डेस्क द वन ही वुड यूज ना किसी से हाथ मिलाते थे जस्ट टचिंग एल्बो विद एवरीबॉडी तो ही हैड अ माइल कॉफ ठीक है तो ही हैड अ ही ओवर हैड अ लिटिल कॉफ एनीवे ठीक है लेकिन फिर भी वी थॉट दैट यू नो यू गॉट बी वेरी केयरफुल कहते नो नो आई एम फाइन आई एम ओके जी जी सो दैट फ्राइडे वी वर इन वर्क टिल वेरी लेट 
So delivery anything was it was running late. So anyway, Dad said, I said, you go home and I'll stay. He said, no, no, I'll stay here. With you. Okay. So anyway, so when the delivery came, he left. Get I'm gonna go home. So on the way home, I called my dad. I said, uh, everything is done and fine. How are you? Are you okay? He said, I've um, I've got fever coming. Bukhar chal gaya mujhe abhi. I said, okay, that that's not a very good sign. So he said to himself, he said, look, um, I I don't think I'm gonna come into work. I'm gonna self isolate. Uh, for a week, and he knew uh, the rules, and he was okay. he was one who always followed government guidelines, and uh, you know he was because he, he was educated and he respected the law. Yes, yes of course. So he stayed home for the uh, for the following uh, week, and he said, "Please, nobody come to visit me." He said, "I don't want to give it to anybody." And it was just him and my mom in the house. At that time, he wasn't certain that he had COVID. Well, because the temperature came on, and the signs of the COVID. signs were there. Okay, the signs excellent. were there. So okay. he said, "Look, nobody come and visit okay. me." So every day we would call him and we would FaceTime him with the children and uh, he rang me on the Sunday said, please, you know, get me some oranges and pick me up this okay. medicine, but don't come in the house, just leave it on the doorstep and, I will, and I will pick it up. So the whole week went like this G -G. and like I said, we kept in contact with him, how things were. G -G. So now on, so this is the Friday, so now the following Saturday, I called him in the morning, I said, how are you? He said, you know what? I actually feel so much better. I finally, I think I'm shrugging so this, this off. This was a week later. A week now. later, and okay. he said, I had, didn't have fever all last night, uh, okay. and I think I'm, uh, I'm getting over this. So we thought, thank mm -hmm. God. He said, I'm a bit tired. Of I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. And then my wife FaceTimed me with her children at four o'clock. Okay. And he's back in bed, shivering okay. away with high fever. Okay. So, you know, we thought this is not right. So what we did was, because it was now day eight, uh, we thought we'll call the ambulance to come and check him out. So we called the ambulance and um, they came into the house. They said, look, please don't come into the house. We'll go and see your dad. So they went to check him and uh, we were worried about his oxygen saturation levels. Okay. Um, and they said, look, his oxygen is about 95%, which is fine, but he's got a lot of crackling on his chest, okay. which is not a good sign, but we, we said he can come to hospital, but he's chosen to stay at home, which is completely fine. Okay. But if it gets worse, let us know. So we did, again, we didn't go into the house because he said not to. So we went back home. And then I think it was literally 45 minutes later, he called and he said, um, look, I, I'm struggling to breathe now. This is only 45 minutes after the ambulance okay. left. So we called the ambulance and they were already there by the time we got to the house. And um, they were upstairs and they, uh, they were just checking him out. And I could see he had an oxygen blast on. And um, they said, look, unfortunately, your dad's oxygen has dropped down to 82%. Which is critical, and now we have to take him in. So he got up and he, he got changed himself, and um, he was coming down the stairs. And uh, my mom put, put a coat on him, and as he walked past me, I, I put my hat on him because it was cold. It, it was March. And then he um, he left the house and um, he walked to the ambulance, and um, he didn't look back once, not once. Um, and I thought, well, this. I'm sure he's going to get better because we couldn't go into hospital because it was COVID. Yeah, so anyway, he, he went to hospital and um, his phone was off. So but he eventually called me at three o'clock in the morning and he said, look, um, um, they've done some tests on me and they're doing next ray. So hopefully I'll find out what it is, but I've still got the oxygen on. Uh, and then six o'clock in the morning, he rang again and he said that the results came back and I've got uh, severe pneumonia in both lungs and they're going to treat me with antibiotics. Um, but he said, I'm still on oxygen. Take care. So um, then um, I called him in the afternoon and I said, how are you? Sir? I'm, still, I'm still struggling to breathe. I can't breathe without the oxygen. Uh, and then I got a call at, um, at five o'clock from the, the nurse at the AMU in at Good Hope Hospital. And she said, look, unfortunately, your dad is very critical. Um, we've been given oxygen now for almost 18 hours. And instead of increasing his, his oxygen levels, are, uh, are they're decreasing. Sure. And um, they said, look, uh, we have no alternative, but we're going to put your father on a, on a ventilator. We're going to um, put him in an induced coma sure. for up to two weeks. And, and at that time, you know, we thought, okay, this is good because they weren't giving anybody ventilators above the age of 65. So we thought, okay, this is good. At least they're offering him a ventilator because we told him how fit and healthy, and I'm sure he would have told them himself as well. Um, so um, as soon as I got off the phone to her, then my dad called me and uh, he said, look, this is what's happened. I said, Dad, I know, what, I know what, what's happening. They're going to put you in induced coma and you're going to, you're going to be okay. And um, naturally, I became very upset and I was crying on the phone to him and he was very upset. And um, I said, look, Dad, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. You'll, you know, you'll get through this. Um, and then five o'clock, that's it. He was, um, he was put on a ventilator and um, 
he was in the hands of the intensive care and they were said that they will call every day to find a, give us an update on how dad is. Um, and I can call once a day, so I was the only person who was allowed to contact mm. uh, intensive care. Um, so one day they phoned and all we were being told that he's stable and is well and in fact before he went on to ventilator I said what's the chance, they said, he saw us 50-50, so it's a chance you know we're willing to take mm -hmm. it because he was so unwell. Um, so Monday he was pretty much stable but critical, yeah, that's all we were being told. Um, Tuesday was the same, you know, critical, he's stable, his oxygen levels are, are, are okay, blood pressure's up and down. And then Tuesday night I got a call. Um, by 10.30 at night time, which is very unusual because they would never call. And they said, look, uh, your father, unfortunately, is very critical. Um, and you might need to come and say your final goodbyes to your dad. And that was very upsetting that we just, that really hit us that, you know, what are you talking about? What do you mean final goodbye? You're telling me he's fit and he's stable. Yeah. You know, being such a fit man and, you know, we know mm -hmm. that, we know he can get through this because he's a fighter. He's always been a fighter, very positive. And she said, no, I, you know, your, your dad is, is very, very critical. So we said, okay, we're coming. And he said, they said, unfortunately, only one person can, can see your dad. And because you're next of kin, you're the only one allowed. And I said, look, I've got my sister with me. She needs to see her father. And because of their government guidance and guidelines they have, they couldn't do that. So anyway, we went to Good Hope. And um, I had to wear all the masks and, you know, the, the gloves and the whole don uh, uh, outfit that I had to wear. And I went to see my dad, and um, yeah, he was um, just just lying on the bed. You know, he was in a coma, and I could see that every machine was on on full. You know, his oxygen they were giving it was hundred percent, and the medicine, everything was one hundred percent. But you know, he was just lying there, and uh, and I thought, no, oh, this this can't be it. You know, this this is my dad. I know him better than anybody. I know that he can fight this. So the nurse came in, and she explained all the machinery, what machinery was doing what, and. Then we realized how critical dad actually was, you know, to stay on 100% oxygen. His heart was beating 167, 174 for the last four hours. So his, his heart had become weak. His kidneys were pretty much non-existent. Um, he also got sepsis. Oh and I thought, well, it doesn't look very, um, very promising, but we, we were still hoping on that 1% chance of survival. Um, so this is a stage I thought, look, it's very important, it's very imperative that my, at least my sister Mm -hmm. come and say a final goodbye to dad and they said no you know you're the only one allowed so that was a tough time because uh, you know it's this is not the way you want to see your dad go so uh, and I, I, I kissed my dad's head and his chest and I kissed his feet and, and then I begged the nurse that listen I won't come back but please let my sister come so they uh, uh, thankfully they, they allowed that so she said a final goodbyes and then we were still hopeful that you know a miracle can happen you know God can be in miracles uh, so uh, the next day I got a call that uh, we need, Mr. Wong, we need your permission to turn the machines off to your dad. That's true. But my mom didn't know anything because she herself was very unwell at home. So I had to go and explain to mom that this is what's happened and uh, dad is very unwell and this is what they're asking me to do and I'm going to go to hospital. And we had to make the decision that unfortunately to turn the machines off but uh, nobody in my family would let me go to hospital because I was already in the hospital the day before so I was more prone to getting COVID. Last, so that was tough. Last conversation with dad, last words. Can you remember anything? Yeah, he said, I don't know what's happened. What's happened? Those were his last words. That was his last words and, and um, it was me doing more talking. I was trying to say, dad, you'll be fine. He said, I just don't understand what's happened. How can I fall ill so quickly, you know, what is this? And I said, Dad, don't worry, you're, you're in the best place you possibly can. That was the, as the last words I spoke to Dad. When you, obviously, when the message was going around in the community, yeah. whether it was all social media, whatever media channels you were, conveying your message through. I know that because I've seen the messages. People were praying around the world. People were praying here for your dad. Mm -hmm. Messages are pouring in. When you broke the story to your mom, she was unwell. Yeah. What did she say at that time? What was her word? She was honestly completely silent because, because she had symptoms of COVID. So literally mm -hmm. she was inside the house and uh, me and my wife, my sister and her husband, we were literally standing outside with the door closed and we had to tell her this is this is what's happened you know and it was naturally very upsetting for everybody and she was crying and we were crying and we couldn't even hug our mom and that was more upsetting and then 
when we got the call at quarter past seven that unfortunately dad's passed away. Can you imagine not being able to hold your mom's hand? Yes. Not being able to hug her? And not even your mom, but you know, or your, my, my sister, my brother-in-law, my wife was there. We couldn't, that was tough. That's, that was a test. Um, we couldn't see anybody. People couldn't come to our house, although people were turning up. Um, then I put the message, you know, you saw the message go out and the hundreds and thousands, thousands of messages were coming through and the phone calls. And you know, I took every single call because I knew that this was the love for my dad and this is what he would have done. Um, so that was tough. That was extreme. Those next couple of days were very tough and, you know, I had all the, uh, the news channels to doing interviews the following day and I was just putting that one message across that, you know, you must follow the government guidelines. This is very, very important. You know, this is reality. This is what we've had to go through. Oh. We didn't want anybody else to go through that. Amar, people are not taking this very seriously. You know that way. We, yeah. are. we all know that, particularly <coughs> the Asian community. Let me just draw your attention back, just for the benefit of our viewers. When your dad was in hospital, you knew very well. The nurses, doctors have made it clear that you, he's only got a few, maybe minutes or hours. You were there in the hospital. Mm -hmm. How did you feel at that time? What was going through in your mind, in your head? Was it, was, um, it was surreal, you know. And I want everybody to take a note of this particular point. You people, see, uh, particular people who think, <coughs> COVID is not going to affect me or my family. It might affect other people, but A, COVID doesn't exist for us. Let's hear it from Amar. No, I think, I think the people that say it doesn't exist are very ignorant. They don't understand the reality what a family has to go through when you lose somebody so close to you who dies of COVID. And these are the people that also need to be educated. Okay. And the people who are not following the government guidelines. You know, going into hospital and, and, and seeing your loved ones the way we saw my father. And we were actually one of the lucky ones to at least being able to see my dad. You know, a lot of people couldn't even go into the hospital to see their, their, their parents mm. or their brothers or sisters or mothers who had passed away. And when I got to the ward, you know, it's, 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 it's feel, it looks very alien because everybody had these guards and masks and all this stuff on. And, mm. and I'm looking around. In, in fact, I, I didn't look at other people when I was walking. I was just too focused on, on, on going to see my dad. But when I was coming out, all I saw was, you know, our own people and all the beds, people from the BAME community, because they're the ones that got affected. Of course. But a lot of our own people, and the reason why a lot of our own people get it, no, I mean, the, the obvious reason is because we have those underlying conditions of heart disease, diabetes, and, and all, and which are not, easy. you know, uh, something uh, to have when, when COVID is here. But then over the days and, and prior to my dad even passing, our community did not take this seriously. Didn't take it seriously. They didn't follow government guidelines. I mean, I could go down to the city of Birmingham into our Asian areas. You can go walk in the shops. I didn't see people do any social distancing or wearing masks or anything like that. So and I think that's, and not just that, everybody knows that even place of worship, when mosques are closed down for Jummah, there are people in Jummah people's houses. That made my blood boil. Because these you are the people who are causing so many deaths in our community. You see, what I'm, the point I'm trying to raise and highlight to our viewers is that that could have been anybody's father, anybody's mother. And when Amr said, I kissed his forehead, goodbye. I kissed his feet, goodbye. That could have been any of us, me, you, anybody else. Explain to me. You know, that feeling, honestly. That feeling I want to know, that feeling I want that to for express me, for viewers. That for me was the endless love I had for my father. You know, I would never have thought that I would have seen my father go like that because the lifestyle he had, you know, in your mind you think he's going to be there to the 80s and 90s, but mm -hmm. that unfortunately was a sad reality of life, that this is the end of what happens, this is, the, this, this, this is the end, and I would not want to wish that on my worst enemy. What we had to endure as a family, as his son, mm -hmm. you know, that's, it's very, very painful seeing, you know, any, anybody's parent passing away, it's not, it's, it's, not, not uh, it's not easy, but mm -hmm. to go in the circumstances that he did, not being able to be with him in that week that he was at home, keeping him, even just asking us to keep away. You know, if, you, if, I, if I go back and think about that, I said, I don't care, I wish I could have just gone and sat with him for that week and talked to him had I known this what would have happened. But he was a very wise man, very educated man. He knew he was unwell. He asked us to keep away. I know people in the community 
who knew that their, 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 their parents or whatever were not well and they were sitting around them. Now those people got COVID. I spoke to somebody two days ago. His mother passed away because they attended a family function, mm -hmm. 30 people together. Everybody's got COVID and his mom passed away. Why can't our community understand that this thing is real? This thing is out there. This thing affects us. It takes away your loved ones. Let me ask you another question. There are many, many occasions. There may be a million examples which you can give me. But one memorable, loving example between you and your dad. I know there's millions. Yeah, I don't know for the last 50, 60 years, you know, your relationship with your dad. Well, I think, Ashadar, the only thing I could say is he taught me how to live life. And, you know, two weeks before he passed away, and he would have this thing about uh, eating fruits. He loved eating fruits and he would always eat his fruits. You know, there was a, a table in front of my mm -hmm. desk. And he was always, always talk to me about, you know, certain issues, whatever. And right. uh, he was sitting there and uh, eating his fruits and he would say, look, son, remember one thing. He said, nobody's going to remember you for the business you had, for the money you had, for the cars you drove, for the house you have. He said, people will only remember you for what you did for them mm -hmm. and the community. And he said, always remain humble because he led by example. This is the person that he was. Of course. Honesty, integrity, and to stay humble. Of course. And to serve humanity. Bishak. And he did that all his life. His father done it, his brother do it. He got me into charity work. He says, serve this community and serve humanity. He said, because these are the deeds that are gonna help you in the hereafter. So he taught me very strong values of life, how to live life. He led by true example. You were very close to your father. Yeah, well, yeah very we, we were all close, all the children and the grandchildren, but I spent a lot of time with yourself, him. You? The world will witness <clears throat> that, whether it was functions, events, parties, weddings, uh, you name it. Mm -hmm. You were always close with your father. Now it's been approximately, I believe, seven months, just over seven months. Six or seven months, approximately. Mm. How's life without dad, Amar? It's a tough, very, very tough. You know, it's um, it's not easy being at work, mm -hmm. not being able to share, the, 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 you know, all the good things that we did at work, not and easy being at home. it's not easy being at home. You know, we had two eats without my dad. You know, that was tough. Um, the birthday celebration we've had, or any celebration that we've had, mm -hmm. you know, his presence not being there, that's very painful. But, you know, you can take it as two things. You, know, you, can, you can sit at home and, and, and just think negative, and, uh, and, and, you know, but the other thing you can do is, and what he always taught us, be positive. Okay. Get up and, 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 like, for example, even getting back to work after he passed away. Mm -hmm. You know, his memories would always uh, come back to me while he's teaching. So I got, I, I, I said, look, I've got to get up and do for him now. So really for me, it's, it's carrying on that uh, wonderful legacy, legacy that he left behind. I think if, it, it'd be very sad if I didn't do that because it's it, it, the immaculate person that he was, you know, the impeccable record that he kept with the community. As a son, it's our duty. And not just a son, all the children yeah. have a duty to carry their father's legacy forward, but for being the only son, you know, it's duty upon me to carry his name forward and, and fly the flag of my father on this earth. And, and, and that's what I try to do, and I try to, you know, emulate him as much as I possibly can. And very briefly, how are your children taking this? They're all hurt. Lost all his grandchildren, grandchildren, not just my, yeah. my children, but my sister's children. He was yeah, close family. to all his grandchildren. How are they taking um, this? They're, f they're, they're finding it very, very hard because missing he spent time with everybody, even the youngest one. Mm. The youngest only five, mm -hmm. but he was, uh, he was dad's grandson. You know, he, because he looks just like him, mm -hmm. and my dad spent a lot of time with him, and as he did with all the grandchildren. So, you know, they, we, uh, yesterday, and we were sitting there watching small videos of my dad, and they just sit there, and they said, oh, so we're not going to see dada again. I said, no, and, you know, you try to explain to them, uh, but they understand everything. And, you know, they're, they're actually very upset um, mm -hmm. because he did everything for them. You know, he really, like, we, we touched upon him being a family man, not just with us, but I think he spent more time with the grandchildren because when we were, when, when we were growing up, he was working, so this was his time to spend, to with, the spend with children. Like with any grand and of grandparent course. does, they like to spend time with their grandchildren. So, yeah, I mean, not just us as a family, but, you know, Everybody misses him very, very much. Memories, of course, last forever. They, they always will do. And it's, it's up to us to keep those memories alive. Amar, as I says, due to time, we just have under two minutes. I would love 
to go on. There are many, many questions still unanswered, but I promise you, you'll be back again. Mm -hmm. We could talk about this we all day if you want to, but uh, in the we could no, I really, uh, for myself as a son of Nazir, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very honoured that you invited me in and so. being able to talk about my dad and a lot of your viewers uh, who knew him, um, you know, to, to re rekindle those memories and to the community out there for them to understand how dangerous this COVID is and to take things seriously because I don't want anybody else to, to lose a loved one the way we did. Of course, he was your father, but he was a guide to everyone. He was Absolutely. a guide to me personally. I knew him, as you're very well aware. Good and bad times, we would always turn to Mr. Nazira Wan. That, that was the only name. Any time of the day you call him, he was there. Of course, Nazira Wan was always there for all of us. Thank you very much, Amar, for your time. And may Allah bless your father. I mean, inshallah. The highest place in Jannah. Inshallah. He was a legend. Legends, as I said, never die. He's always there. We live forever. With all of us, live forever. Viewers, thank you very much for watching Kanji TV, for watching your Britain. Today it was a special, special tribute to a very respectable individual in our community, Nazir Awan Saab. There you go. A great man, a great living legend he was. On those words, keep watching Kanji TV, keep watching your Britain, same time, same place, next Monday, 5 p.m. UK time. Don't forget, don't forget to watch the repeat. I can't even get my words out. As soon as I've talked about him and seen the pictures, it's, it's very yes. difficult for myself. It is. You know, all sorts of things come into your mind, you know, when you're thinking or speaking about such a <coughs> humble personality. But viewers, Friday, uh, Friday 2 p.m., sorry, UK time, uh, you can see the repeat. And also Facebook, uh, you can catch me on my Facebook, Shezad Iqbal, and on Kanji TV's Google page and websites and YouTube and so on. And those words, love, respect and peace for everyone. See you same time, same place next week. Allah Hafiz.